is through videos like this already i was reaching you through audios of course everybody knows it gives me great pleasure to meet you students through videos also uh, just to start with i am trying uh, the chapter complex numbers of class 11 of cbsc okay just listen complex numbers the topic i have chosen today is complex numbers just because the name is uh, given as complex numbers is no way complex just for the sake of the name is given as complex the I mean topic is not complex as such don't come to the conclusion since the heading is complex numbers it is no way complex it is as easy as any other topic we used to know in fact real numbers okay just because real numbers in no way connect with real life situation or something like that okay we just call it for the name sake we call it as real numbers just because it's named as complex numbers we can't come to the conclusion the whole chapter itself is complex it is as easy as any other topic with that note i'd like to start with in fact you might have seen in our lower classes almost maybe in kg or in first standard at least counting of numbers the teacher would have taught you to get, she would have given you some 10 pencils and she'll tell you to count how many pencils are there etc you might have start counting with 1 2 3 4 etc such a set is called set of natural numbers we call we call it as capital n set of natural numbers okay which contains elements let us say 1 2 3 it goes up to infinity there is no end at all it goes up to infinity okay let it be now just if you call a child and give her give the child three chocolates and if you tell the child to count the she will count and tell you there are three chocolates with me okay you take away one chocolate if you question the child once again the answer will be two you take away another one the answer will be one i have one chocolate left with me if you take away that also at some some cases the child may cry in some cases will get an answer i have no chocolate with me therefore just to represent absence of things there is a need to introduce another number called zero okay to represent absence of things there is a necessity to introduce another introduce another number called zero therefore taking zero along with these numbers we define another set called whole numbers set of whole numbers here we introduce we should feel proud that zero is introduced by we indians one two three four etc goes up to infinity okay when i take two natural numbers or two whole numbers and add for example four plus three seven plus five the resultant or the answer is again in the set of natural numbers or set of whole numbers but if i do so in the case of subtraction if i subtract a greater number from a smaller number for example three minus five since you are in 11th standard you know the answer is minus 2 you will quickly tell me the answer it is minus 2 if it is in the lower classes the child may blink seriously i don't know what is to do with 3 minus 5 etc therefore there was a necessity to introduce some numbers towards the left of 0 as negative numbers and such a set is called integers we call it as z or i integers as you call it as a set of integers set of integers it goes from minus infinity dot 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 minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 3 4 etc it goes up to infinity again okay here again just take a sheet of paper just listen if I am going to, if I consider this particular sheet of paper to represent number 1, just imagine I just fold it once like this. I just fold once equally and if I uh, uh, unfold, you know very well, there are two equal halves. I will call this particular upper portion as half and the lower portion is half. If I am going to fold it once again further equally, if I am going to fold once again further, 
okay if i'm going to fold like this let us say and if i unfold i'm able to observe there are four equal parts this represents 1 by 4 1 by 4 1 by 4 1 by 4 the, the smaller part over here each of those part is one fourth of the whole paper therefore there is no provision to represent such fractions here there is no provision to represent as fraction, fractions in the set of integers. Therefore, there was a necessity to introduce another set. We call it as Q. It is called set of rational numbers. Set of rational numbers. Okay. We call it as numbers of the form P by Q with P comma Q element of integer. This is called is an element of. The symbol is called is an element of. Those two are integers and q not equal to 0 because division by 0 is not allowed mathematically in general. Okay, even if, if you are going to even think about any fraction of the form p by q is a rational number, you can even define rational numbers in a different way in terms of decimals. If a decimal comes out with two different possibilities, it, if it is in the form of finite decimal or infinite recurring decimals, those two things are taken for granted as rational numbers. For example, if I think about 2 by 5, what is the division here? I end up with 0.4. 5 fours are 20. It is an example for finite decimal. This is an example for finite decimal. Okay, let me think about 1 by 3. What do I end up with? 0 0.3333. It keeps on recurring. I put a bar or a dot above that 3, that 3 gets recurred. Therefore, when I am going to think about a fraction in the form P by Q with PQ as integers and Q not equal to 0, I will end up with any of these two cases, namely as finite decimal or this is an example for infinite recurring decimal infinite recurring decimal recur recur in the sense you might have heard your father telling me i'm having a recurring deposit in the bank i'm it means that the father will keep on depositing 1000 rupees per month for 12 months every month he is having the same amount now for it's called a recurring deposit here the same let number is being repeated repeating decimal or recurring decimal both will imply the same now for if i come across the possibility of finite decimal or infinite recurring decimal it's an example of a rational is definition of a rational number again but there is a possibility of decimals ending up with non recurring infinite decimal i can think about such cases for example 0 0.1001 0001 etc there is a format but none of the elements gets uh, uh, recurred here there is a format or you can think about root 2 root 3 root 5 root 6 root 7 etc if i'm going to think about square root of any imperfect square for example number 1 4 9 16 etc are called perfect squares if i'm going to take the square root i end up with a whole number or an integer such numbers are called perfect squares if i take square root of any imperfect square for example numbers of the form 1 of course 8 27 are called perfect cubes if i take cube root i end up with a whole number okay therefore if i am going to take square root of any imperfect square or cube root of any imperfect cube etc such numbers are called irrational numbers such numbers are called irrational numbers if you know the rule how to find out the root of uh, 2 you can do it throughout your lifetime there is no rec uh, num no number will get its record and you'll keep on going on you will get different numbers. Such numbers are called irrational numbers. Therefore, there was a necessity to introduce R is equal to set of real numbers. This is called set of real numbers, which is union of set of rationals and irrationals and irrationals if i take they, uh, these both together such a set is called set of real numbers this is a set you might have got as the biggest set you, you might have seen in your till you are 10 standard okay but here if you're going to think about square root of a negative number there is no provision to represent such numbers in this particular set there was a necessity to introduce a set called complex numbers which is given of the form x plus iy where xy are real numbers and the 
specific name for i is either i is the root of minus 1 or i square equal to minus 1. I take i is equal to root of minus 1 or i square equal to minus 1. That's the specific way of representing complex numbers. This is called set of complex numbers. This is called set of complex numbers. This is how we come across the necessity for introduce a set of complex numbers. In fact, you can represent in number theory n is in fact contained in w w is in fact contained in z set of integers and z is contained in fact q and q is contained in in fact r and now r is contained the very big set which we can imagine of here is c actually here this is a contained here because 0 is in w but not in n the negative numbers minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 are there in z but not in w and any number of the form p by q with q not equal to 1, not equal to 0 is almost anyway understood. q not equal to 1 such numbers are there in q but not in z. Here it is the form p by q where q is equal to 1 in fact. And here you have all irrational numbers here but it contains only rational numbers. And you have a number of the form x plus i y where y not equal to 0. Such numbers are there in set of complex numbers. Therefore, you have some connectivity between the states, I mean sets namely n is contained in set of natural numbers, is contained in set of whole numbers, is contained in set of integers, is contained in and Q is contained in R and R is contained in C. This is how we get to know the necessity of introduction of complex numbers. Okay, now when we think about any complex number, there should be a kind of notation. We normally uh, uh, represent complex numbers as that Z or Z1 or etc. Okay, if you are given a complex number Z equal to X plus IY. Okay, we call X as real part of the complex number real part of the complex number z of the complex number z we write the short form re of z write in the short form re of z and y is x is called x is called real part of the complex number y is called not i y simply y y is called imaginary part the imaginary part imaginary part of the complex number of the complex number z complex number z we write that i m of z okay now if i'm going to think about 2 plus 3i real part is 2 imaginary part is 3 if i take root 3 minus i real part is root 3 and imaginary part is minus 1 not simply 1 i have to take along with the minus sign okay and if i'm going to think about a real number of the form x x can also be written as x plus 0 y therefore every real number is also a complex number whose imaginary part is 0 therefore when the imaginary part is 0 such complex numbers are called purely real complex numbers such complex numbers are called purely real complex numbers ok I can think about a number of the form i y there it is equal to 0 plus i y whose real part is 0 if I am going to imagine a complex number whose real part is 0 such complex numbers are called purely imaginary complex numbers and of course 0 is also a complex number which is written in the form 0 plus 0 y whose real part is 0 as well as imaginary part is 0 0 is also a complex number every real number is also a complex number which is written of the form x plus 0 y Okay, now if you are given a complex number z equal to x plus i y, now the notation z bar given by x minus i y is known as the conjugate of the given complex number. If I change the sign only for the imaginary part, it is known as the conjugate of the complex number. That is known as the conjugate of the complex number. Let it be. Now, listen carefully. When I am going to think of a complex number, x plus i y correspondingly i can think about the point x comma y in the coordinate plane if both x y are positive it will be in the first quadrant if x is negative y is positive it will be in the second quadrant if x y both are negative it will be in the third quadrant if x is positive and y is negative it will be 
in the fourth quadrant. Therefore, corresponding to z equal to x plus i y, I'll be able to think of a point x comma y in the coordinate plane. Similarly, if I'm given a point x comma y in the coordinate plane, equivalently, I'll be able to think of a complex number x plus i y in the set of complex numbers. Therefore, we used to say in general, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the set of complex numbers to the elements in the coordinate plane, all the points in the coordinate plane. Okay, after representing all the points in the coordinate plane, the specific name for the coordinate plane is organ plane. It is called organ plane. For example, if I'm going to think about the point 2 comma 3 is equivalent to 2 plus 3i, the set of complex numbers. If I take 3 plus 4i, the set of complex numbers, equivalent to that, I'll have the point 3 comma 4. In fact, by representing all the real parts on the x-axis and the imaginary parts on the y-axis, I am able to plot the points in the coordinate plane. I am able to plot the points in the coordinate plane. Okay, any real complex number will be on the x-axis. All purely, uh, I mean, imaginary complex numbers will be on y-axis. I repeat, every purely real complex numbers will be on x-axis. Number of the form 2 plus 0 y is equal to 2 comma 0 in the, I mean, set of, uh, uh, in, the, in the plane, in the plane, coordinate plane. And if I'm going to think about 3i or 0 plus 3i is equal to point 0 comma 3 in the coordinate plane. Okay, how to represent the coordinate uh, points in the coordinate plane, we have now observed. Okay, now there is a specific representation of uh, complex numbers in the form polar form. The specific name for that is polar form, polar form or modulus amplitude form, modulus amplitude form or modulus argument form. There are three different names for the same thing. Modulus argument form. Modulus argument form. In fact, in fact, let me take a general point capital P x comma y in the coordinate plane. This is equivalent to the complex number z equal x plus i y in the set of complex numbers. Let me plot the x axis. This is my x axis. This is my y axis. Okay, now let me draw P, P1 perpendicular to X axis. This length is automatically the X coordinate of the point X. This will give you automatically the Y coordinate of the point which is Y. I take this length, just a notation, R equal to root of X square plus Y square by Pythagoras theorem. It's a right angle triangle. Okay, I mark this particular angle to be theta. I mark this particular angle to be theta. Now, in triangle OPP1, if I try to find cos theta, if I try to find cos theta, look at the diagram. It is adjacent side by hypotenuse. It gets reduced to x by r, implies x becomes r cos theta. Similarly, sin theta will be opposite side by hypotenuse, which is nothing but y by r, which implies y is equal to r sin theta. Now, for let me think about my complex number z equal x plus i y. This x can be replaced by r cos theta plus i r sin theta. Let me take r as common, cos theta plus i sin theta. Here, r given by root of x square plus y square, that is known as the modulus of the complex number. This is known as modulus of the complex number. Complex number z, it is represented the usual way of modulus symbol with vertical sign. Okay, mod z. And theta, whose value given by minus pi less than theta less than or equal to pi. This is called the principal value of the argument. Theta is known as argument of z. Argument of z, z is given by theta. I repeat, I have chosen a general point capital P x comma y in the coordinate plane. And I have drawn OP, where O is the origin, which is the point of intersection of both an X and Y axis. And I have drawn PP1 perpendicular to X axis. This length is nothing but the X coordinate of the point, which is X. This length is nothing but the Y coordinate of the point P, which is Y. I assume this particular angle to be theta. In this particular right triangle, if I apply cos theta, I end up with X by R. Okay, if x becomes r cos theta. If I apply sin theta, I'll get y by r. 
now y will be equal to r sin theta now for in x plus i y i can replace it by r cos theta plus i r sin theta i can take r as common r into cos theta plus i sin theta i am able to visualize that any complex number z equal to x plus i y can be brought to the form r into cos theta plus i sin theta now we have visualized just now we have visualized such a representation is called polar form of the complex number or modulus amplitude form of the complex number or modulus argument form of the complex number here r what is the connection between r and x and y r given by root of x square plus y square is known as the modulus of the complex number and theta theta can be given in t different ways that is sin theta is equal to y by r cos theta is equal to x by r or tan theta is equal to y by x is supposed to be known as the argument of the given complex number written as arg of z is called known as the argument of the given complex number z okay then the value of theta satisfying the condition minus pi less than theta less than or pi is known as the principal value of the argument the value lying between minus pi and pi inclusive of minus pi plus pi exclusive of minus pi is supposed to be the principal value of the argument that is known as the principal value of the argument this is how we just come to the conclusion that any complex number can be brought to the form modulus argument form from the uh, di diagram it's easy for you to i mean note one more point the geometrical meaning of modulus tells you it is the distance to the point capital p x comma y representing the complex number z equal x plus y in the coordinate plane and the origin o 0 comma 0 since it's a, it's a distance distance can never be negative therefore r is always considered to be a positive quantity and angle made by this segment op with the positive direction of x axis is always known as the argument of the complex number the geometrical meaning of uh, modulus tells you it is the distance between the point p x comma y representing the complex number in the coordinate plane and the origin o 0 comma 0 the angle made by this segment op with the positive direction not this angle this is with respect to the negative direction with respect to the positive direction of x axis is known as the argument of the complex number okay these are the necessary things you are supposed to remember anyway then in addition to that i'll just tell you one more thing and we will do problems on that also quickly i'll cover minimum of five or six problems and i'll wind off just listen listen carefully okay just listen okay if condition if if for a complex number z if z equal to z bar what do you infer what do you infer this is the question given to you just listen i assume let z equal to x plus i y i am talking about the answer now okay now z equal to z bar is the condition given to you now let me substitute z as x plus i y let me substitute z bar as x minus i y i just now i gave you around five minutes back whenever a complex number z equal x plus i y is given if i change the sign only for the imaginary part such a complex number is known as the conjugate of the given complex number okay here obviously x gets cancelled or i can bring it to lhs x minus x becomes zero automatically either way you can write bring it to lhs 2i y is equal to zero implies y is equal to zero by 2i is equal to zero if y is equal to zero what is the implication the complex number is purely real therefore if z equal to z bar implies here the complex number is purely real complex number complex number is purely real okay now for z equal to z bar for a complex number then then it becomes it becomes a purely real complex number it becomes a purely real complex number okay let it be if i take the condition as minus z bar let us see what happens okay if z equal to minus z bar i mean to say as in the same manner z equal to x plus i y x plus i y is equal to minus of x minus i y which implies x plus i y is equal to minus x plus i y i y i y gets cancelled 
2x equal to 0 implies x equal to 0 by 2 is equal to 0 implies z becomes purely imaginary. Yeah, z becomes purely imaginary. It ends up with simply iy. Whenever I get it as a form iy, it's supposed to be purely imaginary. It's known as purely imaginary. Now for z equal to z bar, will give it a condition that it's purely real. z equal to minus z bar will give it a condition it's purely imaginary. I think it's clear to you. Now, I'll do one problem on modulus amplitude. Okay, let me take the example of take, get the modulus amplitude form get the modulus amplitude form of z equal to 1 plus i. Okay, now what I will do is my idea is to compare it with compare it with the general possibility x plus i y. Here instead of x I have 1 instead of y I have 1 the general proof I have taken the relation between r and x and y as r equal to root of x square plus y square. Therefore using which I will get root of x square plus y square which is root of 1 square plus 1 square which is reduced to root 2. I will take only positive root 2 because I can't think of it to be a negative value. I already told you it is the distance between the point 1 comma 1 and the point 0 comma 0. Distance can never be negative. Therefore, I take only positive square root. I should not end up with negative square root here. If I do so, I am not clear with my concept of distance between a point to be positive always. Is it clear? Okay. Now, if theta is the argument, theta is the argument, I have the conclusion cos theta given by x by r which is 1 by root 2. Sin theta is given by y by r that is also 1 by root 2. In fact, I gave you theta given in three different formats namely cos theta is equal to x by r, sin theta is equal to y by r and tan theta is equal to y by x. Just by looking at one of those values, I can't come to the conclusion in which quadrant angle theta lies. If I take only cos theta, if cos theta is positive, my angle may be in the first or fourth quadrant. I am not sure where it is. If I am going to think about only sin theta, if sin theta is positive, I will come to the conclusion it is either in the first quadrant or second quadrant. I am not sure where it lies exactly. If I think about only tan theta, if tan theta is positive, it can be either in the first or third quadrant. I can't conclude exactly where it lies. If I think about cos theta is negative, it may be either in the second or fourth, I mean third quadrant. I can't come to the conclusion where it lies exactly. That is the reason why I have to think about both the values cos theta and sin theta. This is positive as well as this is positive. Cos theta, sin theta, both are positive only in the first quadrant. Because in the second quadrant, sin theta is negative, cos theta is sin theta is, sorry, sin theta is positive, cos theta is negative, sorry. Then the third quadrant, sin theta is negative, cos theta is negative. In the fourth quadrant, cos theta is positive, sin theta is negative. You know very well the rule, all silver teacups or all students take compline or coffee, whatever it may be. The first letter will tell you in which quadrants, what are all the quantities to be uh, positive or negative. Okay, now this will imply you theta is in the first quadrant theta is in the first quadrant. Okay, let it be. Also, I can come to the conclusion easily. Sin pi by 4 is 1 by root 2. Cos pi by 4 is 1 by root 2. Therefore, my theta gets reduced to pi by 4. Therefore, z equal to 1 plus i is given by root 2 into cos pi by 4 plus i sin pi by 4. That is the corresponding way of writing it in the modulus amplitude form. But if such a question is there in CBSE pattern for 3 marks or 4 marks, you are supposed to write in an elaborate manner. Okay, let us assume that such a question is there in your competitive examination where you are supposed to put a tick mark as 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or A or B or C or D. There it is an easy way to do. Just listen. Just listen. There you can easily find out the, uh, I mean uh, A or B or C or D quickly. Just listen. I will mark the point 1 comma 1. It is clear. That is equivalent to 1 plus I. I will join the point with O. Okay. I will draw this uh, perpendicular. These things you are 
two in a span of just uh, two seconds. Okay, this length is one. This length is also one. It's an isosceles right triangle. In any isosceles right triangle, the remaining two angles are 45 degrees. Yes or no? The remaining two angles are definitely 45 degrees. Now for this angle will be, in terms of radian measure, it will be pi by 4. Now, your geometric meaning tells you this length is nothing but your modulus. Now, for this is 1, this is 1. Now, for application of Pythagoras theorem tells you this is root 2. Now, for this is my modulus. This is my amplitude pi by 4. Now, for I can quickly make a tick mark of root 2 into cos pi by 4 plus i sine pi by 4 in your competitive examinations. I repeat quickly once again if you want. If I think about the point 1 plus i, okay, now I'll plot the point 1 comma 1. I'll join it to O 0 comma 0. I'll draw perpendicular to the x-axis. This length is 1, this length is 1. Now, for it happens to be isosceles right triangle. In an isosceles right triangle, the remaining two angles are equal other than the right angle and each angle equal to 45 degrees. Yes or no? You know this much. Otherwise, you can't come to the conclusion quickly. Okay, each of these angles equal to pi by, uh, pi by 4 or 45 degrees. Now, for this angle is pi by 4. This length happens to be the modulus. Now, for this is root 2 by Pythagoras theorem. Now, for I'm easily, I can put a tick mark against the answer where it is given as root 2 into cos pi by 4 plus i sine pi by 4. That helps you to do uh, your competitive examinations in a faster manner. That can be done always in an easier manner whenever the angle happens to be pi by 4 or pi by 6 or pi by 3, etc., etc., etc. That's always easier. You know the values of uh, 0 degrees, uh, th th 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees. Now, for if it comes any of those categories, it's easy for you to do. Okay, other than this, you know very well in normal uh, number theory, real numbers, Okay, root of a number, root x is supposed to be equal to y, if and only, if the symbol is called if and only, if x is equal to y square. By root x in general, in normal mathematics, for normal number theory, in normal real numbers, I am supposed to think of another number y whose square is equal to x. That's a real meaning of, meaning of root of a real number. The same thing is even applicable for complex numbers. If I am going to think about a complex number, just listen. If I am going to think of a complex number x plus i, y, the root is easily existing. Root is possible. Root of a complex number is possible that's equivalent to that I need to identify another complex number x1 plus i y1 whose square is equal to this value that's the meaning of square root of a complex number let me take an example quickly and we'll do it okay just let me take an example z equal to root of 3 minus 4i let me try to find out root of 3 minus 4i okay let this be is equal to x plus i y. Let this be is equal to x plus i y. Okay, this will imply you 3 minus 4 i is equal to x plus i y, the whole square, which will imply you 3 minus 4 i is equal to x square plus i square y square plus 2 x y i because I am using the rule a plus b whole square is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab. Let it be. Now, this will imply you 3 minus 4i is equal to x square minus y square plus 2xyi. Since i square is equal to minus 1, I am replacing i square by minus 1. Now, I forgot to tell you long back, I should have told you, two complex numbers, z1, z2 are equal, if and only if the real parts are equal and imaginary parts are equal. It's as equal as comparing two polynomials. When you are going to compare two polynomials, you will compare the coefficients of x square. You will compare coefficients of x cube y. You will compare the coefficients of y power 4. Similarly, when two complex numbers are equal, I am allowed to equate the real parts and I am allowed to equate the imaginary parts. Parts. Therefore, I am supposed to equate the real and imaginary parts. Therefore, I will end up with x square minus y square equal to 3 and 2xy is equal to minus 4 by equality of complex numbers. By equality of complex numbers. I will be comparing the real and imaginary parts. Okay, I am supposed to solve for x and y now. By, but I have an easier way to do. I have an easier way to do. I'll try to think about the reduction for x square plus y square, the whole square. This is x power 4 plus y power 4 
plus 2 x square y square okay this can be written as x square x power 4 plus y power 4 minus 2 x square y square plus 4 x square y square this is possible for you to write this is nothing but x square minus y square the whole square this is nothing but 2 x y the whole square these two values are already with you now for let me substitute here 3 square plus minus 4 the whole square this is from 1 and 2 I am substituting from 1 and 2 which, which will imply you 9 plus 16 which is 25 therefore x square plus y square is 5 minus 5 is not possible as x square is greater than or equal to 0 and y square is greater than or equal to 0 those are real numbers x y real numbers square of any real number can never be negative sum of two positive values are always be positive or if it is 0 it will be 0 if both are 0 sum will be 0 if both are non-zero, definitely if one is non-zero, obviously sum will be definitely greater than zero. Therefore, minus pi is not allowed. Okay, let me try with one plus three. Okay, let me try with one plus three. Equation one and equation three. What do I get? Minus y square plus y square will go off. I'll get two x squares equal to eight which implies x square equal to 4 implies x equal to plus or minus 2 let me try 1 minus 2 here x square goes off I will get minus 2 y square is equal to minus 2 implies y square equal to 1 implies y is equal to plus or minus 1 now if you look at it carefully there are two different values for x and two different values for y but therefore I end up with four different possibilities both x and y are positive x positive y negative x negative y positive and x uh, the, uh, both are negative those are four possibilities i am supposed to restrict myself which are the two to be considered out of these four which is obtained by looking at equation two what is it exactly two implies two x y is equal to minus four implies x y is equal to minus two product of two numbers are will be always negative implies which implies x is positive and y is negative or x negative and y positive if x is positive y should be negative then the plus into minus will make it as negative if x is negative y will be positive therefore you end up with 3 minus 4i to be i have two values for x what what are they plus or minus 2 or is it correct therefore i'll get it to be 2 minus i or minus 2 plus i let me check whether my answer is correct or wrong let me try with 2 minus i the whole square 4 plus i square minus 4i 4 minus 1 minus 4i it is 3 minus 4i square of the required answer gives you the obtained answer gives you the one by which i started with similarly the other case also will be true therefore my answer is correct is an easier way to do just i'll do one problem on how to find a real imaginary part and i'll try to wind off i'll try to do one more problem how to find a real and imaginary part okay now find the real and imaginary parts of let us say z equal to 3 plus 4i by 1 plus i you might have seen in lower classes maybe in 9 standard when you are going to be given root 3 minus 1 in the denominator you will be trying to multiply and divide by root 3 plus 1 such a rule is called rationalization such a rule is called rationalization but we will never use realization here to make the denominator as a real number I have to multiply and divide by the conjugate of the denominator if the denominator is a plus ib I will multiply and divide by a minus ib if denominator is a minus ib I will multiply and divide by a plus ib denominator is 2 plus i I will multiply and divide by 2 minus i denominator 3 minus 4i I will multiply and divide by 3 plus 4i okay here therefore I am forced to multiply and divide by 1 minus i 1 plus i into 1 minus i now I am supposed to apply distributive property 3 minus 3i plus 4i minus 4i square divided by 1 square minus i square the denominator I am using the formula a plus b into a minus b 3 into 1 3 3 into minus i minus 3i 4i into uh, 1 this is 1 4i into 1 4i 4i into minus i minus 4i square therefore this is reduced to 3 plus i 4i minus 3i is plus i this becomes plus 4 divided by 1 plus 2 therefore this is 7 by 2 
plus 1 by 2 i. Therefore, a real part of z becomes 7 by 2. Imaginary part of z, you should write only 1 by 2, not i. Imaginary part is as equal as the coefficient of i. Let me check whether my calculation is correct or not. To make the denominator a real number, I am forced to multiply and divide by the conjugate of the denominator. The conjugate of 1 plus i is 1 minus i. I multiply and divide by 1 minus i. 3 into 1 is 3. 3 into minus i is minus 3i. 4i into 1 is 4i. 4i into minus i is minus 4i square. Divided by 1 square minus i square. The rule here is, since a plus b into a minus b to b is equal to a square minus b square. Now, I'll replace everywhere i square as minus 1. Okay, now 4, 3, 4i four minus 3i is plus i. This becomes plus 4. i square is minus 1. 3 plus 4 is 7, 7 by 2. And this is 1 by 2i. This is my real part. This is my imaginary part. Now, 4, 7 by 2 is my real part. 1 by 2 is my imaginary part. If anybody writes 1 by 2i, he or she doesn't have a clear idea of imaginary part. Imaginary part is also a real number. It's not a complex number. If I include i along with that, it's called a complex number. Imaginary part is simply y in the case of x plus i y. y is the real number. Just because we use the word imaginary part doesn't mean that it is imaginary. It's just you are using the word imaginary part. It's not a complex number. It's a real number. Now, for I to replace it only by half. I have to write it only as half, not half i. Okay. Now, just I'll do one more problem. Then I'll wind off. Okay. If conjugate of conjugate of 24 plus 7i is x plus i y. It's a very simple problem. Find x comma y. You can even make it as complicated by multiply and divide by some quantity etc. Okay. Write it in mathematics. Okay. 24 plus 7i whole bar is equal to x plus i y. That's the meaning. By bar, I mean conjugate. Listen carefully. By conjugation, I have to replace the negative of the imaginary part. This will imply you 24 minus 7i is equal to x plus i y, which will imply you x equal to 24, y is equal to minus 7. I am supposed to compare the real and imaginary part here again by equality of complex numbers. Equality of complex numbers. Okay, equality of complex numbers. I repeat, conjugate of 24 plus 7i is given as x plus i y. I need to find the unknown quantities x and y. Now, by mathematically, if this is written in terms of wording. I am supposed to replace it in mathematics. The uh, conjugate of 24 plus 7i is written as 24 plus 7i bar. But the reduction is replace the uh, imaginary part by its negative value. If it is 7i, I will write as minus 7i. If it is 5i, I will write it as minus 5i. If it is minus root 3i, I will write it as plus root 3i. Now, for it becomes 24 minus 7i equal to x plus iy. I have to re uh, compare the real parts, x equal to 24. I have to compare the imaginary parts, y is equal to minus 7. Uh, with this, I will wind off. I will try to meet you with uh, so many such videos further. Anyway, thank you very much for patient listening as well as patient watching. Thank you.